I'm excited to have me as my guest, Emmanuel Roger. She is an accomplished actor, model, humanitarian, pet lover, and she's here today to talk about her successful career and how she maintains a healthy lifestyle. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you know, um, you're also an equestrian, right? You, you are, you have a horse. I do. Um, bunny. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious to know about how, like, how fit you have to be, like, you know, to, to be fit, to ride a horse. Um, well, it depends at what level, you know, what you're doing. Um, with what I'm doing, the more fit you can be and the more endurance you have, the better, just because we're jumping and, and it requires a lot of strength and core and leg and just being able to hold yourself up. I mean, you're not holding on to anything. You're, it's, uh, it's an incredible amount of sort of uh, combination of core and just full body fitness. So, so, so tell us, how do you do like, you do like um, core strength, like push up, sit ups, like how does, you know. Just... I've been so, so lately because of quarantine and stuff, we couldn't get to the gym and that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of group fitness. Like I love going to classes cause it keeps me motivated. There's other people around me and it's, yes. it, you know, there's a, you kind of have a personal trainer and it, you, it's harder to slack off because if you do like, you're like looking at the person next to you, going, okay, well, if they can do it. I can definitely do it. Like, you know, keep going. Um, and so, so I love that concept. It's just at home, I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And so we ended up uh, downloading the Beachbody app, um, the Beachbody on demand app. And we've been doing that. Like I've been, we started with T25, which I had actually DVDs of that before. And then uh, we, once we got the app, we went into doing, you know, the 20, 21 day fix. And there was like three versions of that. We just finished 63 days of doing that. Wow. And now we're on 80 day obsession, which is, so it's, I mean, it's a combination of weightlifting, cardio, you know, endurance workouts, um, all kinds of stuff. I generally try to work out after I ride, because if I work out first, I don't like to go, you know, if my legs are burnt out or whatever, then, then I'm weak on my horse and I can't, you know, like it, it's hard, it makes it harder for me. So, um, unless I have enough time in between to sort of rest and regenerate a little bit, but because of the weather being hot right now too in LA, we generally ride in the morning. So I'll ride in the morning and then I'll come home, have a snack and, and do my afternoon workout. Wow. And how much do you spend with, with money? Like, um, Oh gosh. Um, it depends. I actually, <laughs> I spend a lot of time at the barn. It's like my second home. Yeah, <laughs> I remember somebody, so nice. somebody said to me at one point, they're like, don't you have a home? And I was like, I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> like second home, the, the barn, like, but you know, cause now in quarantine, you're spending more time. Right. And that must be great. You know? Oh, it's fantastic because I can actually, you know, I can ride and then I can hang out for a couple of hours, like take her for grass and just hang out with her and bond with her and, you know, just and, and then just like go watch the other horses go and like, you know, what they're doing. And, I, and I'm a very visual learner that way. So it's, it's nice to be able to spend the time and not have to rush off because you've got an appointment or whatever. I mean, it's, it's a double edged sword because it'd be nice <laughs> to be busy that way again. <laughs> but yes it's super, it's a nice luxury to be able to go and just not worry about having to get back home for anything. Yeah. So what about the diet? Like, what does Bunny eat? Like, and yourself, like, how do you, because you work as a team, right? You're, you are together and you're, you're competing together. So you need both to be fit mentally, like the whole, yeah, tell us. Yeah. So, I mean, for the horse, obviously she's got her specific diet of what works for her, depending on how much she's working and that sort of thing to keep her in shape and to keep her healthy. Um, for me, we actually, actually my, my fiance is an amazing gardener, um, farmer. He likes the term farmer. Uh, <laughs> we have a, like an enormous yard filled with garden vegetables. And, you know, so we basically eat farm to table Nice. with the exception of you know buying fish like the proteins and stuff we eat farm to table almost every night and unless you know we're and he likes to cook which is great because i'm not much of a cook i like to bake <laughs> which i try not to do too much of because i if it's there i'll eat it but we eat you know i don't count calories i don't um you know i'm not restrictive with what i eat i just if i'm hungry i eat 
I watch what I eat in the sense of like I eat healthy and I don't eat junk. But um, but if I want a piece of chocolate or cake or a cupcake or whatever or pizza, like I'll have it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and I, you know, like and that way I don't feel deprived because if I t- if I try to remove that, like on cleanses and things where you're like no sugar, no salt, no fun, no life, no nothing. <laughs> then all you're thinking about is that. <laughs> yeah, you have to enjoy it. Everything in moderation, right? That's, exactly. That's the key. And, and, and tell us about the competition. Was it third place the first time? But you started um, in 2010, right? Um, Riding? Yes. Um, yeah, I started, so I, I wrote a little bit as a kid, like for two years, like once a week, you know, and I'd take the bus down with my grandmother and then we'd walk. And I mean, it was in Vancouver and it was pouring rain all the time. And, and eventually I just kind of went, I don't want to go in the rain again. It was like, you know, we didn't have like an indoor arena at the place I rode or anything. So it was, it was, it was a little rough during the winter months for yes. sure. Yes. And um, I eventually quit. My parents never said a word. And I was like, it's weird. Like they always like, you know, when I didn't want to do piano anymore and ballet and that sort of thing, they were, they were like, you're going to regret it, blah, blah, blah. Not a word about the horseback riding. Well, I figured out why when I picked it up again in 2010. It's not a cheap sport. <laughs> so, <laughs> like even the equipment alone is, you know, exp- without even owning a horse and just doing that. So I was like, ah, I understand now. Um, but yes, I started in 2010 just taking lessons and kind of finding my way and and eventually I mean it was gosh eight years before I actually you know had my very first horse that I've I've never owned a horse before so it was like oh my god my first baby (laughs) and I was like panicking at first and then you know now I've sort of settled into you know I'm not micromanaging everything um (laughs) every day there you know it's like okay she's fine she's in good hands. I can, you know, rest assured that she's taken care of, but at first you just don't know. And you're like asking questions and, and making sure, well, does she need this? Does she need that? And like, is she going to be okay with this blanket? Is she going to be warm enough? It's like, (laughs) she's fine. (laughs) What do you love most about competing? And, 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 you know, what is it that, that drives you? Passion? I think it's that connection and the bond between you and the horse, you know, like, and, and it's a team sport. It's not, and it's a constant, like, you know, the other day I was, I, I, last week or so I was getting frustrated because I felt like I'd taken 10 steps backwards. Like I was like, why is nothing working? Like, I'm not like, we're not hitting our stride the way we were. And I was getting frustrated, but it's just like, you're dealing with a live animal. It's not picking up a bat or a hockey stick or, you know, a tennis racket. It's, you're it's another being so you know they have bad days too I you know and I wasn't on my game but it was like one of those learning curves and then yesterday we had a good ride and it was like oh okay so I I haven't you know I don't totally suck (laughs) and and then like the competing it's like it's easy to get into the headspace of like I want to win I want to you know like (laughs) want to beat everybody And, and that's a nice byproduct of of you know competing well however for me right now, what I really focus on is just like, okay, what can we do better that we didn't do? Like we didn't get right last time. How can I execute the course better so that we're riding better as a team? And then once you sort of get those foundation blocks, like really, you know, like when it just becomes super simple for you to do it, whatever height, and you're ready to move on. It's like, and then then you're able to go faster, or you know, speed things up, and 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 uh, and be a bit more competitive. But for me, it's just like, okay, did I improve from last time? That's what's important. And it's nice to, you know, getting ribbons is nice. That's always fun. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. And where are they? <laughs> Do you I know. display like they are. Well, hold on. Let's see. I'm going to turn the camera over to oh, good. Uh, the. Uh, Thank you. There's. Where's the ribbon rack? Hold on, I've got my ring light. It's okay. Um, I'm, you're traveling with me now. Here we go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we've wow. got we've got ribbons up there. Oh, nice! Oh my goodness! So we fall. It was fun. You know, I put the ones that are um, the most like kind of the best yeah. ones there. Like there's other ones that I was like, well, <laughs> we like the primary colors. You know. Blue, red, yellow. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. 
and I, I love your organization, Softball Organization. Tell us about that. Can, can people donate, support? And Yes. So um, we have the fluffball.com is our website where you can go and you can donate and, and support. So what we, what I, st I started back in 2010, I did my first event at my house. And since then we were doing them every year up until the last couple of years where things, it, people were having babies, people were getting married, like from uh, on our board and stuff. And it was like, okay, let's, let's focus on online stuff. And then of course this year we were like, all right, we're ready to have another fluff fall. It's going to be fun. Let's find a location. And then lockdown happens. We're like, well, so much for that. <laughs> yeah, But it's, it's going, though. You know, you're doing what you can, right? And you're doing exciting stuff. For example, if I were on Ellen. Oh. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's great. I, I was actually looking. I was so, I, I learned a lot. You know, the toy. <laughs> did you watch the recent episode, the one that was posted last night? Okay. <laughs> tell us, tell us more. How did that come about? Um, you know, I started doing like just videos where I was talking to camera. Like I, I'm not on my feet. I generally, you know, unless it was a post with me and Bunny or me and the dogs. Like I didn't. I, I was like, I don't feel comfortable doing videos of just me like talking about myself. And then I was like, but my fiance was like, I think you should do something. It'd be funny. You know, we came up with the whole, if I were on Ellen, like, well, she had me on her show, like, what would she ask me about? And I kind of love Ellen. I think she's great. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just came from there and like, as kind of a bit of a joke and, and then evolved into <laughs> filming these episodes and doing stuff. And I was like, well, why not? You know, it's, it's something that keeps me busy and I get to play and be silly and there's no pressure. It's sort of like, well, I put them out when I want, how I want as often as I want, or as little, you know, the last one, it was, it'd been a month almost since the last one, but it just took that long to get the manscaping tools. Yeah, <laughs> so. no, it's great. And the thing is you're creating it, you're producing it. How much work is involved? Like usually, I mean, we shot about two days worth of, you know, a couple of hours, like of doing like the first, you know, like doing all the stuff where I'm sitting and talking to camera. And then we had to wait for nighttime and, and Vince was like, let's do that tomorrow or whatever. So we waited a couple we did it in the evening when the, you know, when the light was, you know, the sun had gone down and then generally I'll, you know, go and sit down with, um, Dan who, uh, who edits for me and we'll sit and he's got all the, the stuff and, and that takes like, I think that one took about four and a half hours to edit about that for like between four, depending on what it is. Sometimes it takes a little less time. If there's a lot of footage, like the one of, of Vince's dad talking about his time on the um, Ed Sullivan show and, and the Mike Douglas show that took a really long time to edit. I think we took like almost seven or eight hours to edit that because there was so much footage to go through and how we were going to make, I mean, it was still eight minutes long and we're like, okay, how, but we have to introduce him and we have to, you know, like which story do we pick? So it varies, but generally about three to four days total of just like, you know, wherever, if we need to go on location, you know, when I did the one with the garden and, and horse, horse crap, um, <laughs> you know, like I had stuff here that I was doing. Then I was at the barn and did some video footage there. Then we went back and did some other stuff so that, cause I needed Vince to help me with the camera cause I couldn't hold it behind me and do what I needed to do. So it just stuff like that. Yeah. So what's the feedback been like so far? It's been great. The feedback for this past episode of manscaping has been like, I mean, it just launched last night, but like the, the feedback has been fantastic. Like people are really enjoying that. It's, I think it's, it's a little bit of fun and, you know, humor in a time where people are sitting at home going like, what is going to happen with the world right now? Yes. So it's, uh, I hope that it's like a nice little break for people and, and a little escape. And you're having fun and, and it's, it's great. And I hear too, like, are you creating masks too? Like I am. As a matter of, as you can see, I've got my sewing machine serger in the back. Yes. And I've, <laughs> I've got a, I mean, I could let me, let me grab I that. ask you. <laughs> I've got like a bunch of masks that I've made. And then I've got, um, more fabric that I have, like, that I'm just like waiting to make other masks. Yes. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. So, and I started making uh, a dress, but it's, oh, and I, and I made some little napkins, little French Eiffel Tower, whatever. It's, you know, trying to stay busy. <laughs> yes, for sure. And, you know, I, I want to go back to when you started acting. Was it in grade school or should I ask, what came first, modeling or acting? Uh, acting, I mean, I started acting when I was in second grade, like in school plays, you know, like, and I loved it. And that was always something that I was passionate about. But as far as professionally, I, I ended up going to Japan for a couple of years, two or three years, almost three years. Like when I was 16, they, they sent me to Japan to model there. And I spent about three years on and off going back and forth and which was great. I mean, it was, um, it was a way to put some money away and it was a way to see the world. And like, I grew up pretty fast, like, you know, having to take responsibility and be on my own at that age. And it, like, I had a blast. I had a lot, I wouldn't trade. It was like my, I equate it with my college years. I never went to college, but that would be like, you know, yes. the experience that I gained from doing that. And, um, and then after when I came back, I had, you know, I got a job in Vancouver. I think I was was working at Le Chateau and at Earl's as a hostess and then a waitress and and um and started doing you know auditions for bit parts here and there and things started to to come and um and eventually I was able to actually quit my job and and do film and television full time and that was yeah that was pretty much it and then I never went back to modeling really other than uh for press stuff for work. But what a great experience and transferable skills, right? Um, it's a, you've been on covers of magazines and as well. So that that's exciting. It's uh, but hard work, right? It's hard work. I mean, people, you know, that on the outside it it looks like it's like glitz and glamour and whatever. What you don't see is the hours of travel, the very little sleep, and then <laughs> getting up, being on set for sixteen to eighteen hours, then having to, you know then having them force your call because they need to, you know, they need to start early. So instead of your 12 hours, you get your, you're getting like eight <laughs> of like total time from, you know, set to set kind of thing. So you're really sleeping only, you know, a bunch of hours and because you've still got to go home and eat and, you know, shower, work out if you can, and then prepare for the next day, you know, whether it be a modeling job or a, a acting job, um, it's just, there's, you know, it, it's part of all of it. Like working, you've got to fit in your workouts. It's part of your job. So and skin health, like looking at yeah. your skin is a major. Well, it's like, especially as you get older too, because it like when I was 20, it wasn't as, but now if I don't get my sleep, I like, I see it in my skin and in my eyes and it's like, everything just looks a little like tired and I'm like, <laughs> okay, we need to. <laughs> But I, you, you had your first movie part from my understanding, 1995, is that right? Uh, made for movie, was it? Uh, uh, um, yes, with Faye Dunaway and Stephen Collins and Cameron Bancroft, A Family Divided. Family Divided. Okay. Was that 95? I believe, made for TV, 1995, I believe. I think but you're right, because I, yeah. It's so great because I've seen a clip of that and I, I'm like, oh my God, I look like a baby. <laughs> I look like I'm 14 years old. I'm like, oh wow. Like the pudgy little face and the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny to me. Like, cause I don't, you don't really realize it until you look back on it and you're like, wow. <laughs> yes. Well, you had, you know, such an accomplished actress you are. Um, you received a Leo, right? A Leo yes. award. and. 2013 and but but tell us some of the movies you you're on lost girls smallville um two and a half men what was that like that was fun i mean that was sitcom i had never done sitcom before and so going from you know that was like going from zero to a hundred like overnight because it was the number one sitcom on you know on tv at the time and and i went in i was like i was terrified because i'd never done live audience other than you know school plays that's completely different <laughs> and <laughs> and I was just like oh my god and um so yeah I was I was completely scared and terrified for the first like couple of episodes and then I kind of settled into it and it was so much fun because you know you show up like it, you, it's kind of like a regular work week compared to 
doing one hour. Um, because you show up and rehearse on, on the Monday, it's a table read, like you're working maybe five hours a day, maybe. <laughs> and you're like, it just, you know, and then on Thursdays and Fridays where you start taping and then the live audience on Friday, you're looking at maybe a 12 hour day on the Thursday and then a um, like about a 10 to 12 hour day on the Friday when you factor everything in. You're not shooting the whole time, but you're preparing and you know rehearsing and all that stuff and you're through hair and makeup and then the show starts at like six o'clock or seven o'clock they bring in the audience and then you start shooting oh exciting and it was mia right the character yes. wow was it fun it was fun it was a lot of fun i really enjoyed that like the cast was phenomenal super talented super funny super sweet and nice and um it was just a nice environment the crew was fantastic i mean it was just and it was new to me, so it was like everything was just like, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> great. I mean, but you've been on so many movies and TV. Do you have a favorite um, role, uh, favorite TV show, favorite TV, TV movie? Like I mentioned, Lost Girl, um, you played Morgan. Morgan the Morgan, yeah. Yes. I think I think the Morrigan definitely is up there like that was a lot of fun and we had a very special chemistry on that on that show the cast just like clicked and I think it translates and you know how well the show did and and you can see it on screen it was very it was very special um two and a half men was a blast like I wouldn't trade that for anything and uh I think those are like the two top ones I mean CSI New York was fun just because like shooting a series in LA like I mean two and a half men was in LA but we were on the stage all the time at Warner Brothers um with CSI we were you know downtown we were kind of out and about and it's I mean it's just fun shooting in LA on look like being home and doing that is such a nice luxury because usually I spend most of my time traveling to Toronto or Vancouver or North Carolina or Atlanta or something like that to shoot. Um, it's nice to be home and be able to, to drive home and sleep in your own bed. That's wonderful. And you know, I want to talk to you about Susie's Hope. Um, tell us about that. You won an award. Yeah, that was, um, I, I won Best Actress at the Greensville Film Festival or something. There was like, it won a bunch of different stuff, which was really cool. Um, and it was just a very sweet movie based on a true story about a dog who was found, you know, covered in maggots and, and had been burnt alive. Like, a, you know, I won't go into detail, but it was pretty horrific. And this woman saved uh, this dog and she was a pit bull. Um, and it just so happened that she had been attacked by a pit bull and had lost it. Like she had been pregnant, been attacked by a pit bull previous to that and lost her baby. Um, so her adopting a pit bull was sort of a big deal. Um, and then her journey of how it changed her life. It was a very, like, I, I love the story and I wish, um, like more people had seen it <laughs> because it was it was a cool it was a cool little film for sure well you you're so involved in animal care and as i mentioned humanitarian you've um how does it make you feel that when you're giving out you're giving raising money you're helping it's a great feeling i mean i feel it's as, as somebody in the public eye, if you have a platform, I feel like you have a responsibility to do something with it, whether, you know, no matter what it is. I mean, whatever your passion is, there's, you know, some people are like, well, why animals? You know, there's so many starving children in the world. And like, they're all equally important causes. Like there's, you know, there's no, but how great is it that not all of us do the same one? Because if we did, that would be a problem. So everybody has their passion. And I think, you know, I have a responsibility to uh, raise awareness for whatever it is that I choose to raise awareness about. And um, for me, it's animals and animal welfare. That's wonderful. And what's, what's next for you? <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? Um, <laughs> well, we, we just, uh, I think that there was a series that I did that was like a web series that this was maybe a year ago we shot it. I can't remember. Anyways, I play like a mob boss and a female mob oh boss, which is super fun. And it's called Millennial Mafia. And I just heard from the producer that they sold the series to Amazon um, for their free dive platform, I believe. 
So I'm not sure when it's like premieres or anything. Like it's all, I was like, you know, it kind of came out of the blue and I, he told me that and I was like, that's so cool. That's great. Like I, you know, who knew and that like, you know, I mean, and what great timing because <laughs> right now not a whole lot is going on, but um, unless I want to, you know, start making my own little, you know, dress factory or something. <laughs> I've got the garment district happening behind me. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. That, and I'm doing some work on another property, like a house that I, uh, that I'm prepping to sell and, and then which also wonderful. It's like, yeah, perfect time to sell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but that, it's fun because, you know, we're going to you know, be staging it and doing all that. And, and I love like interior design and that sort of thing. So that's going to be really fun for me. But right now we're just in the stages of, uh, finishing up the floors and, you know, doing what needs to be done to get it perfect and looking great. That's wonderful. People want to follow you. They just go to the social media <laughs> website or. Yeah. You can follow me at, um, on Instagram at, at Emmanuel Vogier. And Twitter is E. Vogier, and Facebook is The Real Emmanuel Vogier. <laughs> but you can go to my web, uh, if you go to my website, which is EmmanuelVogier.com, it lists all the, all the different uh, platforms where you can find me. You know, I wanted to thank you very much for your time. I had so oh. much fun. No, thank you. This has been great. I learned a lot. <laughs> about horses my goodness so just, you know thank you again oh you're welcome thank you so much for having me on yeah so um, i'll tell leslie you're leslie is so wonderful she is I, oh. i've known we've worked together for 20 some years now like and we've traveled together we, i mean we've had a we've had quite the adventures together and wherever we go for some reason we end up in the craziest like fun situations, but it's like, we just attract like the, the funniest people and the funniest situations. And we're like, well, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> well, maybe a book. <laughs> yeah, it's, right? I think so. <laughs> Thank you again. And uh, merci beaucoup. Oh, merci. <laughs> <Really good. laughs> Salut. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.